I welcome you all in yet another lecture on passive microwave components. Today we'll discuss hybrid rings, commonly known as rat race junction. We'll also discuss waveguide corners, bends and twists. But first we'll discuss a rat race junction. So figure one here shows a cross-sectional view of a rat race junction and figure two shows a three-dimensional view of the same rat race junction. In the previous lecture, we discussed a magic T, which is a four-port junction. Today, we again are discussing a four-port junction, a rat race junction, which is also matched at all the four ports, like a magic T. The four ports P1, P2, P3, P4 are connected to an annular line of proper electrical length. So this length is fixed proper it is not arbitrary this total length as is shown it is 1 1 over 2 lambda that means it is 1.5 lambda the total circumference of this ring is 1.5 lambda these ports as can be seen are connected at proper electrical lengths p1 p2 p3 p4 are connected at proper intervals for example the spacing between or the electrical length or the, the separation between ports P1 and P2 is lambda by 4. The separation between ports P2 and P3, the arms connect, connecting to the ports P2 and P3 is again lambda by 4. Likewise, the distance between ports P3 and P4 is again lambda by 4. This lambda is basically guided wavelength. So this has to be lambda g by 4. This again has to be lambda g by 4, lambda g by 4. And on the other side, it is 3 lambda g by 4, where lambda g corresponds to guided wavelength. Lambda g is guided wavelength. Now, in order to understand the mechanism, the working of this um, rat race junction, let us consider that we are feeding a signal at port 1. So, let me erase it. So say for example, we are connecting a wave at port 1. This gets split into two waves. Some of, some part of it will flow in clockwise direction. Clockwise with respect to the center of this junction. With respect to the center of this junction so let's assume this is the center of the junction so another part of this wave will flow in counterclockwise direction so this wave which is being fed at port 1 gets split into two waves one flowing in clockwise direction and other flowing in anti-clockwise direction the anti-clockwise wave as is shown is in red color so what happens is that these waves, for example, let, let's see what happens at port 3. So these two waves, they reach port 3, one from the counterclockwise direction and other wave from the clockwise direction. So these two waves reach at point 3 or at port 3. So what happens is that we need to find the phase difference between these two waves the wave that reaches port 3 in clockwise direction and the wave that shown in red color that reaches port 3 in counterclockwise direction so the length of the path the length of the path traversed by the wave from port p1 to port p3 in clockwise direction would be lambda g by 4 plus lambda g by 4 which is nothing but 2 lambda g by 4 and the length of the path traversed in counterclockwise direction this length in counterclockwise direction would be 3 lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 this lambda by 4 plus 3 lambda by 4 so length l2 would be 3 lambda g by 4 plus lambda g by 4 this will be 4 lambda g by 4. 
this is 4 lambda g by 4 and l1 is 2 lambda g by 4. So the difference in paths traversed by the two different waves is l2 minus l1 would be 4 lambda g by 4 minus 2 lambda g upon 4 that would be 2 lambda g upon 4 that would be lambda g by 2. So the path difference between these two waves is, two, is lambda g by 2. Now let us find the phase difference between these two waves. The phase difference, the phase difference as we know would be 2 pi by lambda into path difference. Here we'll write 2 pi by lambda g because we are discussing for a waveguide. So it is a guided wavelength 2 pi by lambda g into path differences lambda g over 2. Lambda g lambda g cancels 2 and 2 cancels pi or 180 degrees. So the path difference between two waves traversing in clockwise, traversing in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction is 180 degrees. When the path difference between two waves reaching a port is 180 degrees, this means they cancel each other. So we don't have any wave coming out of port 3 or the power reaching port 3 is 0 as the two waves cancel each other. So in a nutshell, if a signal is being fed at port 1, we don't receive any anything, any power at port 3 because the reason is that the path difference between the two waves traversing in clockwise and counterclockwise direction is 180 degrees. So why does this power go then? If we are feeding the signal at port P1, why does it go? We'll prove that this signal reaches ports P2 and P4. But it doesn't reach, we have already proved that it doesn't reach port 3. So what does that mean? A signal being fed at port 1 doesn't reach port 3. So in other words, that means S13 has to be 0. The S parameter relating ports 1 and 3 has to be 0. Now let's assume, now let's try to see the path difference between waves reaching port 2. Case number 2. Let me erase it. Again, let's assume we are connecting a wave or feeding a signal at port 1. Again, it will take two paths, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise is shown in red color. So let us see what happens at port 2. So we again need to find the difference, path difference between the two signals traversing in clockwise and counterclockwise. This is our clockwise signal and this red color is our counterclockwise. Now the path difference in this time would be on one hand in the clockwise direction the distance that it has to travel is lambda g by 4. L1 would be for port 2 for port 2. L1 is lambda g by 4. And L2 would be L2 would be 3 lambda by 4 this 3 lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 is 4 lambda by 4 plus another lambda by 4 is 5 lambda by 4. So L2 is 5 lambda g by 4. Therefore path difference would be L2 minus L1 that would be 5 lambda g minus lambda g upon 4 that will be 4 lambda g by 4 that is lambda g and phase difference in this case would be phase difference would be 2 pi upon lambda g into path difference which is 2 pi upon lambda g into lambda g. This is 2 pi or 360 degrees. 360 degrees means that the two signals arriving at port 2 are in phase. A phase difference of 
360 means that the two waves clockwise and counterclockwise waves reaching port 2 are in phase and therefore they add up so we will be receiving power at port 2 likewise if we see the two waves reaching port 4 will again be in phase that is there will be a part difference that there will be a phase difference of 0 degree or 360 degree so again signals reaching in clockwise and counterclockwise directions to port 4 will add up so in a nutshell if we connect a signal at port 1 or if we are feeding a signal at port 1 it gets divided between ports 2 and port 4 so if we feed a signal at port 1 it gets divided between ports 2 and ports 4 and nothing comes out at port 3 so this means s12 must be having some value and s14 again must be having some value so s12 cannot be 0 and s14 cannot be 0 likewise if we connect a signal at port 4 port 4 or port 3 or port 2 we can connect a signal or we can feed a signal at any port if I feed a signal at port 2 for example it will again get split into two parts one wave flowing in clockwise direction other wave will flow in anti-clockwise direction and at any port we can see whether the path difference or the phase difference between the two waves reaching that port in clockwise and anti-clockwise directions is 180 degrees or 360 degrees if the path difference if the phase difference between the two waves is 180 degrees they will cancel out and if the phase difference between the two waves reaching that port is 360 degrees or 0 degrees they will simply add up so let's assume we are this time connecting a signal at port 2 let me raise it first so if I feed a signal at port 2 it will get split into two parts one flowing in clockwise direction other flowing in anti-clockwise direction this is anti-clockwise and the earlier one was clockwise this is clockwise this is anti-clockwise so let us see what happens at port 4 now on one side the wave has to travel lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 so L1 would be lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 is 2 lambda upon 4 is the path length in the anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise direction it has to travel L by 4 plus 3 lambda by 4 lambda by 4 plus 3 lambda by 4 so l2 would be lambda by 4 plus 3 lambda by 4 which is to be kept in mind that this lambda is lambda g so it will be 4 lambda g upon 4 in the earlier case l1 was lamb 2 lambda g by 4 l2 is 4 lambda g by so the path difference would be 4 lambda g by 4 minus 2 lambda g by 4 would be 2 lambda g by 4 that would be lambda g by 2 so lambda by lambda g by 2 corresponds to a phase difference of 180 degrees so that means a signal being fed at 2 won't come out at port 4 so power delivered to port 4 is 0 because the path difference or the phase difference between the two waves arriving port 4 is 180 degrees so S24 again would be 0 so what does that mean that means a signal being fed at port 2 doesn't reach port 4 it comes out at ports 3 and ports 1 in this case so S23 won't be 0 and S21 won't be 0 this can be proved this S23 not equal to 0 S21 not equal to 0 can also be proved by finding the phase difference between ports 2 and 3 and phase difference between ports 2 and 1 in this case the path difference or the phase difference between these two ports 
would be different than 180 degrees. It would be 360 degrees or 0 degrees. So this is uh, the mechanism, this is the working mechanism of a rat race junction. So now we can write the S matrix for a rat race junction. The S matrix would be something like this. As I said, all the four ports are matched to the junction. That would mean S11, S22, that would mean S11 should be 0, S22, likewise S33, and S44. These all will be 0. S11 is equal to S22 is equal to S33, S44. All these four ports are matched to the junction. So that means the first element S11 is 0. S12 would be non-zero. S13 as we have shown that it has to be zero. S13 is zero. S14 is non-zero. As we have seen here, S14 is non-zero. Likewise, S21 would be non-zero. This can be uh, again proved using the same logic that if we connect a signal at port 2, some part of the signal will come out at port 2. 1. So we can write S22 is 0, it's perfectly matched to the junction. S23 would be non zero. These all things can be proved by using the same logic. S33 is 0, S34 would be non zero, S41 is non zero, S42 would be 0, S43, and this would be S44. This is the S matrix of a rat race junction. So what I said is that if we connect a signal at port 1, for example in this case, we see the signal is at port 3 reaching in two directions, clockwise and counterclockwise direction is 0. So let me write it. So one important thing. One important thing to understand is that the cancellation that the cancellation of waves occurs only at designated frequencies or designated wavelengths for an ideal ring. So this can be understood by this mathematical expression. For example, all I mean by this is that we know the wavelength, the guided wavelength as we know is lambda naught by root of 1 minus Fc upon F whole square. This is the expression for the guided wavelength. Lambda naught is free space wavelength. Free space wavelength. Fc as you know is the cutoff frequency. And F is the operating frequency. Say for example, we are working, we are designing this rat race junction. We design this rat race junction. We design this rat race junction at some frequency F or at some frequency F1, for example. So that means this F has to be this F in the denominator. In that case is F1. So, lambda g will be some value. Lambda naught is c by f. So, here it will be c by f1, the frequency at which we are designing this rat race junction. So, let's assume that lambda g value, on substituting these values, c is 3 into 10 to the power 8, f1 is the operating frequency, fc would be the cutoff frequency. Let us assume we are solving it for the dominant te10 mode. So, the cutoff frequency in that case would be c upon 2a where a as you know is this dimension of the wave guide this is over a and this is over b so we know everything so we are designing the rat race junction at some frequency f1 
let us assume the value of lambda g comes out to be 8 centimeter for simplicity so lambda g comes out to be 8 centimeters this is just an assumption so if we look back at this junction if we look back at this rat race junction this lambda by 4 in this case since we have assumed that lambda g comes out to be 8 centimeters so lambda g by 4 would be 2 centimeters so this length basically should be while designing it this length should be this should be 2 centimeters this length again should be 2 centimeters and this length again should be the separation between ports 3 and 4 should be again 2 centimeters and this should be 3 into lambda g by 4 that would mean 3 into 2 centimeters this would be 6 centimeters so at particular frequency f1 for which we have designed it our these separations should be 2 centimeters 2 centimeters 2 centimeters and 6 centimeters on this side so the separation between ports 1 and 4 should be 6 centimeters so this means that if i feed frequency f1 at port 1 frequency f1 for which we have designed it at port 1 nothing will come out at port 3 because for this frequency for this particular frequency the path difference would be such that the phase difference is 180 degrees now say for example i am feeding a signal different than f1 i had designed it for frequency f1 now i am adding i am supplying a signal or i am feeding a signal of frequency slightly greater than slightly greater than f1 so when the frequency is slightly greater than f1 that means for this frequency there won't be any proper cancellation at port 3 so that that would mean that the parameter s13 that was 0 for frequency f1 would be slightly different from 0 at a frequency which is slightly different from f1 so this would be near 0 in this case but not exactly 0 so that's what i mean that for proper cancellation the dimensions had to be calculated prior to using it for an application